are so many echinacea benefits. And yes, while echinacea tincture is an excellent herb for the immune system, that's just one of echinacea's many gifts. With this episode, you'll learn the best ways to work with echinacea, including my favorite way, which is totally underrated, and I'll show you how to make a potent echinacea tincture. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. Echinacea has become somewhat of a poster child for herbal medicine, and with good reason. Echinacea is endemic to North America, and many Native American tribes have been working with it for thousands of years. There are so many echinacea benefits for so many things that eclectic physician herbalists who were a part of mainstream medicine in the early 1900s and 1800s were strongly drawn to it. Unfortunately, as a result, this once abundant plant has been overpopularized and overharvested. It's especially important to grow this plant yourself or only buy from cultivated sources. Do you have experiences with echinacea benefits? I'd love to hear about it in the comments, either on YouTube or on the official podcast page, herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. Your comments mean a lot to me. I love cultivating a community of kind-hearted, plant-loving folks. Plus, it's always interesting and insightful to hear the experience of plant lovers out there. Your suggestion may also help others. Okay, let's begin by making sure we're all thinking of the same plant. There are many different species of echinacea. The two easiest to find and buy are Echinacea purpurea and Echinacea angustifolia. Echinacea purpurea is easy to grow and tends to be cheaper to buy. Medicine makers use the entire plant, including the flowers, the seeds, the stems, and the leaves, and the roots. Echinacea angustifolia is harder to grow and therefore is often more expensive to buy. Medicine makers generally only use the roots of Echinacea angustifolia. Later in this episode, I'll give botanical descriptions on both plants. Some herbalists say that Echinacea angustifolia root is the best choice between the two. I think that's overly simplified and that both plants can be made into powerful herbal medicines. The most important thing is to make sure that your herbs were cultivated well, not wild harvested, and that they were harvested relatively recently, so they're still really potent. As I mentioned, there are numerous species. My friend, Christophe Bernard, recommends growing another species, Echinacea pallida, because of its abundant roots. So I've started to grow that in my garden as well. If you taste a potent echinacea product or simply bite into the fresh plant, whether it's the flowers or the roots or the stems or even the leaves, you'll experience the echinacea zing. Its acrid taste is numbing on the throat and tongue while having this dispersive action throughout the body. Echinacea is stimulating in nature. It stimulates the nervous system function. It promotes the flow of lymph to address swollen glands, and it even stimulates saliva. Echinacea is energetically cooling in nature, and it's used for signs of heat, most notably with infections. Because it stimulates the body secretions, it's also somewhat drying. If you're new to thinking about herbs as cooling or warming or drying or moistening, then check out my first book, 
Alchemy of Herbs to find out more about how energetic herbalism can help you choose the best herbs for your health and your situations. Echinacea is what herbalists call an alternative herb, which broadly means to alter or move someone towards health. Alternative herbs support systems of detoxification like the lungs, the skin, and the lymph. This assists your body in removing metabolic waste. My friend and fellow herbalist, Jim McDonald, has a great analogy for this. He says, alternative herbs are like cleaning out the ash and soot buildup in a wood stove. Once that buildup is removed, the stove works more efficiently. As I mentioned, eclectic physicians popularized the widespread use of echinacea. They learned about echinacea benefits from Native Americans who had been relying on echinacea medicine for thousands of years. Once echinacea was brought into use within the eclectic literature, it quickly became a favorite medicine. Eclectics considered echinacea above all to be an alternative. The King's American Dispensatory, an eclectic textbook written by King and Lloyd in 1898, wrote, Echinacea is an alternative, exerting an influence over the secretory and the lymphatic functions, which is unsurpassed by few, if any, other known alternatives. While echinacea is most popular today for its ability to help with colds and the flu, where echinacea really shines is in its ability to help the body fight off bacterial infections. I think this echinacea benefit is so underrated. One of my favorite ways to work with echinacea is for people with recurring boils, acne, or other types of skin abscesses. For best results, work with the herb both internally and externally. An in vitro study concluded that an echinacea purpurea could provide a safe two-fold benefit to acne individuals by inhibiting proliferation of the organism and reversing the bacterial-induced inflammation. Long known as the toothache plant, Echinacea tea or diluted tincture can be swished in the mouth frequently to address tooth infections or ulcerations of the oral mucous membranes. A pilot study showed that an oral patch containing Echinacea purpurea, Gotu cola, and elderberry was effective in reducing inflammation associated with gingivitis. Herbalists regularly use Echinacea as part of a formula for addressing urinary tract infections. Infected wounds and scrapes also do well with echinacea, again using the herb both internally and externally. Eclectic herbalists used echinacea for many other types of infections including syphilis, chronic leg ulcers, gonorrhea, rabid dog bites, and septicemia. The first popularized use of echinacea for the eclectic herbalists was for rattlesnake bites. We can trace this story back to the self-described Dr. H. C. F. Meyer. Historical references say that Dr. Meyer had learned about using echinacea for rattlesnake bites from a Native American woman. He then experimented with it for a number of years before going to Dr. John King and John Yuri Lloyd with his findings. These were two famous eclectic herbalists. H.C.F. Meyer claimed he had treated many cases of rattlesnake bites in animals and humans using his special blend of herbs, which included echinacea, hops, and wormwood. At first, he was brushed aside for making such outrageous claims. Dr. Meyer offered to send Dr. King an eight foot long rattlesnake so he could experiment with treating animals who had been bitten. Dr. King declined, which is exactly what I would have done had someone offered to send me an eight foot long rattlesnake. Dr. Meyer then offered to travel to Dr. King and allow himself to be bitten by the snake to prove the efficacy of his herbal formula in person. You gotta admit that this guy had a go get him attitude. <laughs> Dr. King again declined, but the persistence of Dr. Meyer inspired him to take a closer look at echinacea. Although Dr. Meyer didn't get bit by the snake in front of Dr. King, there are reports of him willingly getting bitten by rattlesnakes in order to prove his remedy's effectiveness. 
In 1919, eclectic physician Finley Ellingwood reported that Dr. Meyer willingly injected himself with the venom of a rattlesnake on his right hand. After six hours, significant swelling had reached all the way to his elbow. He then dosed himself with his blend of herbs, taking them both internally and externally, went to sleep and woke up four hours later to find that the pain and swelling was gone. So I wanna be really clear about something. I don't recommend getting bit by a rattlesnake to try this remedy. Okay, now that we have that issue sorted, we now know that echinacea works by inhibiting hyaluronidase, the enzyme found in rattlesnake bites, which causes the body tissues to melt and be damaged. In this day and age, if you're hiking through rattlesnake country, certainly pack your echinacea tincture. I'll show you how to make it in just a bit. If you happen to get bitten by a venomous snake, take your echinacea tincture liberally, like one to two ounces, on your way to the emergency room to get the anti-venom. In addition to rattlesnakes, eclectic physicians also used echinacea for spider bites, wasp bites, bee stings, and scorpion stings, some of which can contain that same flesh-dissolving enzyme. Today, echinacea is one of the most popular herbs, and it's especially well known for warding off colds or the flu, which is actually a more recent application of this herb. One meta-analysis of several studies concluded that evidence indicates that echinacea potently lowers the risk of recurrent respiratory infections and complications thereof. Immune modulatory, antiviral, and anti-inflammatory effects might contribute to the observed clinical benefits which appear strongest in susceptible individuals. Another recent study showed that a patent formula of echinacea purpurea was just as effective as a commonly prescribed influenza pharmaceutical drug, plus those taking the herbal formula had fewer side effects. Echinacea is also safe and effective for kids. One clinical trial showed that children taking echinacea for several months had significantly fewer colds and flu symptoms, as well as fewer secondary bacterial infections as compared to those simply taking vitamin C. A 2021 randomized controlled trial showed that outpatients suspected of having COVID-19 who took echinacea and ginger had better improvements in coughing, dyspnea, and muscle pain than those who did not. Another randomized controlled trial regarding echinacea and COVID-19 showed that taking echinacea preventively, as well as for acute symptoms, had significant benefits, including a reduction in viral load, a reduction in days with fever, and decreased hospitalizations. Echinacea has long been used for sore throats by Native Americans, eclectic physicians, and modern day herbalists. In this case, a throat spray or other direct application is best. In vitro studies have shown that Echinacea purpurea is active against the bacteria that causes strep throat. Another powerful effect of Echinacea during a cold or flu is for the reduction of swollen lymph glands. Eclectic physicians also used Echinacea to support the fever process for a variety of febrile conditions such as typhoid and malaria. Echinacea undoubtedly works in a myriad of ways that we are only beginning to comprehend. One way that echinacea works is to stimulate the immune system. We know that echinacea can increase phagocytosis, an immune system response that involves phagocytes engulfing and destroying microorganisms, as well as damaged or old cells and other cellular waste. Phagocytosis is a major way that the immune system removes various pathogens, bacteria, and cellular debris. Echinacea can also increase white blood cells and positively affects NK cells, leukocytes, and T cells. There's also evidence that echinacea is an immunomodulator and that it can dynamically balance the immune system's response. There are many species in the Echinacea genus, and all are herbaceous perennial plants. They used to grow abundantly in Eastern and Central North America. 
echinaceous plants have recently been hybridized into cultivars for gardeners. Echinacea angustifolia and Echinacea purpurea are the most commonly used species for medicine. Occasionally, you may also find Echinacea polita in commerce. For identification purposes, let's compare Echinacea angustifolia and Echinacea purpurea. Echinacea is in the daisy family and has both disc and ray flowers. Both species have similar looking flowers. Echinacea purpurea tends to have a darker purple pink shade than angustifolia's lighter pink flowers. Echinacea angustifolia has narrow leaves. Angustifolia means narrow leaf. Echinacea purpurea has broader leaves. The roots of Echinacea angustifolia are a tapering taproot. Echinacea purpurea has fibrous roots. Both plants attract a wide array of pollinators, including bees, wasps, butterflies, and skippers. It really is a fun plant to have in your garden. Echinacea is a powerful plant that deserves more than simply being the cold and flu herb. It's an immunomodulator. It's amazing for clearing out bacterial infections and can even address venomous bites. But before I share how to make an echinacea tincture, let's talk echinacea safety. Echinacea has a great safety profile and can be taken as needed for as long as needed by a lot of people. There's a common misperception that you need to periodically stop taking echinacea. This comes from a misinterpreted German study. While it's fine to take echinacea long term, I also believe in listening to your body to figure out what's best for you. Echinacea is considered safe for pregnancy and during breastfeeding. For people experiencing frequent colds and flu, there could be some benefit to using echinacea. However, I'd avoid using it as a prop for your weakened immune system. Instead, also consider therapies to build up the health of the immune system, like rest, a nutrient-dense diet, regular exercise, joyful experiences, vitamin D supplementation, and tonic immune-building herbs like astragalus or medicinal mushrooms. There is conflicting evidence that echinacea may adversely affect people with autoimmune conditions. It undoubtedly affects some people negatively with autoimmunity and not others. If you have an autoimmune condition, it's going to be safest to avoid this plant or to consult an herbalist to assess your individualized needs. Chances are that you probably won't be using echinacea to combat typhoid, malaria, or even rattlesnake bites. However, there are lots of indications for echinacea that can help us with common conditions. Keep in mind that echinacea is energetically cooling and drying and is specific for signs of heat, ulcerations, and infected tissues. There are a couple of considerations when dosing echinacea. One, if you are dealing with a skin condition such as bug bites, wounds, acne, or boils, then it's most effective when applied externally as well as taken internally. I personally like to take the tincture internally while applying a fomentation, which is basically a cloth soaked in warm decoction of the root. You can also dilute the tincture for external use. Secondly, consider how often you dose echinacea. Eclectics used echinacea in frequent small doses, the exact amount and frequency varying with the practitioner. When dealing with acute conditions such as a cold or a flu, taking 30 to 60 drops three times a day isn't ideal. Echinacea is better taken every hour or every couple of hours in smaller amounts. Echinacea tincture can be taken at the first sign of a cold or flu, for a sore throat, and as a preventive. I like to take it just before and during travel. The tincture can be taken straight. However, echinacea has a tingly, numbing effect, and some people prefer to take it diluted in water or juice. Diluted, it can also be used as a mouthwash for toothaches or swollen gums. The following recipe comes from a live online course that I teach alongside Emily Hahn. This recipe shows you how to make a one to five ratio tincture. 
If you are interested in getting step-by-step -step guidance in making potent herbal remedies, then check out our course, Rooted Medicine Circle. I'll leave a link for it in the show notes. All right, here's what you need to make this echinacea tincture. 75 grams finely cut and dried echinacea and gustafolia roots, which is about three quarter cup. 375 mils, 50% or 100 proof vodka or other neutral spirits. You can substitute 40% or 80 proof vodka. This is about one and three fifth cups. Here's how to make echinacea tincture. Place the echinacea roots in a pint jar. Pour the alcohol into the jar, tightly cover the jar and label it. Store the jar in a cool dark place for six weeks. Shake the jar daily for the first week, then every few days after that. The dried roots will expand as they soak up the alcohol. So if necessary, add just a little bit more alcohol to keep the roots covered. However, avoid adding too much as this will dilute the tincture. Strain the tincture through a fine mesh strainer lined with cheesecloth and then squeeze it really well to extract all the liquid. Use a funnel to pour the tincture into a clean dropper bottle and label them. Store in a cool place and use within two years. My second book, Wild Remedies, How to Forage Healing Foods and Craft Your Own Herbal Medicine, which I co-authored with Emily Hahn, includes an entire chapter on echinacea. It also contains recipes for an echinacea and peppermint mouthwash, an echinacea throat spray, and how to make an echinacea glycerite, which is a preparation similar to a tincture, but doesn't contain alcohol. Wild Remedies is perfect for you if you wanna learn more about the plants growing near you, Included with each herbal chapter is safety information, sustainable harvest instructions, and lots of fun and easy recipes for both medicine and food. You can find Wild Remedies wherever books are sold, and then check out the back of the book to get simple instructions on getting your exclusive bonuses, including bonus chapters and an herbal documentary series. If you'd like a free printable recipe card of this echinacea tincture recipe, then visit the link in the video description. Also, pick up a copy of our book, Wild Remedies, to get more insights and recipes for echinacea and many other plants. Also, in the video description, I've included other helpful links like where you can buy cultivated echinacea, as well as both my books. If you enjoyed this video on echinacea benefits, and you value trusted herbal information, then I hope you'll stick around. The best way to get started is to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you can be the first to get my best herbal tips and recipes. Here's your echinacea fun fact. The word echinacea is derived from the Greek word meaning hedgehog. It got that name because the center cone of the echinacea flowers is spiky and looks like a hedgehog.